Should Christians be involved in politics? Of course. I have no fear whatsoever of being considered political. I am political because the issues in our culture, the political issues in our culture, as you say, touch on issues that are addressed scripturally. Are conservatives more aligned with Christian teachings and values than the radical left? Of course. From certainly a biblical standpoint, Christians could not vote Democratic because there's no way that a Christian can affirm the slaughter of babies, homosexual activity, homosexual marriage, or any kind of gross immorality. No way we could, you know, stand behind a candidate who was affirming transgender behavior. But at the same time, we need to recognize the important distinction between conservatives and Christians. Though Candace Owens has a questionable view of Roman Catholicism, Owens gets it exactly right when she says this. What's happened a lot, and there's a deeper conversation that should be had, and I wish we had more time to discuss this, is that we are conflating what it means to be a Republican with what it means to be a Christian. And we shouldn't do that. We should not do that, right? The job of the Republican Party is to bring as many voters into, into the camp and see what we have in common and what are the things that we agree on and what we're fighting the left on. The job of Christians is to take a stand against things that are, are against the Bible and against Christianity. Let's take a look at seven extremely popular conservatives and see where we are allied and where we as Christians should be careful. Jordan Peterson is a Canadian clinical psychologist, YouTube personality, author, and professor. Peterson has said many things that Christians would agree with. Well, it turns out it's not irrelevant. You have to go through the surgical transformation, which is a pretty dramatic answer to a question that for 99% of people who are ambivalent about their gender identity would be best solved without surgical intervention. Yeah. Jordan Peterson, you've said that men need to, quote, grow the hell up. Tell me why. Well, because there's nothing uglier than an old infant. There's nothing good about it. People who don't grow up don't find the sort of meaning in their life that sustains them through difficult times. Very recently, Peterson published a video titled Message to the Christian Churches. In this video, Peterson said some very true things about how the church is neglecting men. And because of a very real attempt by those possessed by what might be described as unhelpful ideas to weaponize that guilt, our young people face a demoralization that is perhaps unparalleled. This is particularly true of young men, although anything that devastates young men will eventually do the same to young women. And it is precisely those young men who are deeply conscientious, capable of guilt and regret, who have come to believe in pain that every deep impulse that moves them out into the world for the adventure of their life even that impulse drawing them to women is nothing but the manifestation of a spirit that is essentially satanic in nature. This is not only wrong theologically, morally, psychologically, practically, and scientifically. It is literally anti-true. Invite the young men back. Say literally to those young men, you are welcome here. Todd Friel of Wretched agreed with much of what Peterson said. Painfully, Dr. Jordan Peterson's message to the church mostly spot on. What was the message? We need to do a better job of calling young men up. And it stings because the evangelical church has been calling young people down. But while Peterson has some great insights into how the church is neglecting men, Christians need to recognize that while Peterson often praises Christianity and says Christian sounding things. The Bible is true in a very strange way. It's true in that it provides the basis for truth itself. And so it's like a meta truth. Peterson does not at all represent Christianity. Peterson's video does not at all mention repentance, faith in Christ or salvation from sin and hell. His message is essentially a humanistic message not a gospel message. Tell those who have never been in a church exactly what to do, how to dress, when to show up, who to contact, and most importantly, what they can do. In a subsequent video titled, Message to Muslims, Peterson treats Islam in pretty much the same way he treats Christianity. He tells Muslims to stop their unnecessary conflicts and to shine the light of their religion. So your best bet on the spiritual warfare front is to make of yourself and your Muslim practice something so admirable that the light shining from your well-constituted psyches and productive, generous, and wise actions is so intense that people convert to your faith from sheer admiration. And he calls upon Muslims and Christians to unite as people of the book. 
Let's see if we can unite as people of the book and negotiate our way toward the paradise that we might truly and jointly attain. But of course, Christians and Muslims have contradictory views of the book, and there really can be no spiritual unity or shared paradise between Christians and Muslims because their beliefs are fundamentally different. Do not be deceived. There's a world of Muslims deceived about the person of Jesus Christ. You cannot accommodate that by saying, isn't it wonderful they love Jesus? They don't. Any other Jesus than the true Jesus is not Jesus. Tim Pool is a YouTuber, political commentator, and podcast host who first became known for live streaming the 2011 Occupy Wall Street protests. Tim Pool wasn't a TV show host. He didn't have any experience with live streaming. He was a skateboard videographer. But after 21 hours of youth streaming and covering NYPD's removal of Occupy Wall Street protesters from Zuccotti Park, he's become the eye in the crowd. Pool actually isn't a conservative at all. Like Elon Musk, Pool is a liberal who is basically now categorized as being on the right simply because the Democrat Party has moved so far to the left. Um, you know, I would say you're a pretty much um, conservative. What makes me conservative? What makes you uh, a liberal? Well, traditional liberals in this country, specifically social liberal, uh, is where I've always been, voted for Obama in 2008. Poole fights for many things that conservatives and Christians would agree with. But they restrict certain opinions that normal people have. It's almost like they're engineering the conversation, whether it's intentional or not. Parler right. gave a space to those other opinions, and they, they nuked it. I'm worried about these fringe ideologies that are racist, intolerant, and violent slowly seeping into our culture. Like, when you see uh, politicians openly embrace, like, race-based government policy, it's wor it really does worry me. Poole has even partnered with conservatives at The Daily Wire. How's it going, man? Good What's going to see on, guys. man? Yeah. Thanks, for, yeah. thanks for letting me just show you guys some Mario Kart. Yeah, dude, I yeah absolutely. That. We definitely appreciate Poole's openness to communicate and work with people with varying political beliefs. If you like this video, subscribe to help spread the truth. At the same time, we should remember that Poole is not a Christian and has some fundamentally different beliefs. For example, Poole is unashamedly pro-choice. So uh, I'm pro-choice. Uh, well, we could talk about that. Yeah, I'm pro-progressive tax. Uh, I'm pro-Green New Deal. Tucker Carlson is a television host at Fox News, conservative political commentator, and author. Carlson is a controversial figure who is often accused of being a white supremacist. But what's caught the attention of white supremacists is the way that Tucker talks about immigration. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Tucker Carlson is a white supremacist. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I am. But However, the term white supremacist has been so diluted that now pretty much everyone the left disagrees with now is called a white supremacist. And you've been labeled racist by folks at Media Matters for this, of course, because they label everyone a racist. I'm a Nazi, according to Media Matters. Even Ben Shapiro has been labeled as alt-right, despite Shapiro being the primary target of the alt-right. A bunch of folks on the left seem to think that everybody who is conservative is quote-unquote alt-right. The alt-right actually has an ideology. It is a white supremacist ideology that suggests that Western civilization is predicated not on eternal, eternal immutable principles, but is based solely on race. And Western civilization is just about white people. Carlson fights for many reasonable things that Christians would agree with. Well, the legislature in Arkansas recently passed a bill that would ban doctors from prescribing so-called puberty blockers, heavy-duty hormones, to children who believe they're transgender. The law also bans surgeons from physical castration of children. But the governor of Arkansas, Asa Hutchinson, vetoed that bill on Monday. That's what they're defending. That's what they're encouraging. It has nothing to do with civil rights. It's violent. And the criminals you just saw on the screen are not protesters. Carlson also professes to be a Christian and attends an Episcopalian church. However, when interviewed about this, Carlson said that he primarily attends this church because it's what he grew up with and what he's used to, even though he vehemently disagrees with much of what the Episcopalian church teaches. It would seem that if Carlson really understood and believed the entirety of God's Word and the Gospel of Jesus Christ, that he would attend a church that actually teaches the true Gospel. We remain hopeful that Carlson's professed faith is genuine and that he will grow in his understanding of the gospel and what it means to live faithfully as a Christian. PragerU, short for Prager University, is a nonprofit advocacy group that primarily creates videos on various political, economic, and sociological topics 
that promote an American conservative viewpoint. Think better, live better. Visit PragerUKids.com for free kids shows, cartoons, and books that teach classic American values. I have enjoyed and learned much from PragerU's short animated videos. They are very helpful for understanding a variety of important topics from a viewpoint that generally aligns with biblical Christianity. And even though Dennis Prager is a Jew, he is very supportive of and friendly towards Christians and the Bible. Dennis is a Jew and I'm a Christian, and boy, I learned more in that book than I did in 10 years in Sunday school. At the same time, we need to remember that PragerU is not a Christian organization. In response to Dave Rubin announcing that he and his husband would be adopting children. Yes, uh, we are expanding the family, uh, but you know, I have a belief that when you do things, you don't just go, you go big. So uh, two babies, people, two babies are on the way. Uh, those are ultrasounds. Prager U responded with congratulations rather than concern that this is not how God designed the family. We cannot redefine marriage. And, and I, I know I know what you're saying here, right? You, you, well, you say we can't redefine marriage, but haven't we redefined marriage? No, 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 we haven't redefined marriage. We's, we've blasphemed the God who created marriage, but we haven't redefined it. Dave Rubin is a conservative political commentator and creator and host of The Rubin Report. I first learned about Rubin from a PragerU video. Do you believe in freedom of religion? If you believe these things, you're probably not a progressive. You might think you're a progressive. I used to think I was. My show, The Rubin Report, was originally part of the Progressive Young Turks Network. Rubin is unique in that he is an open, practicing homosexual who has embraced much of conservatism. Rubin is open to having discussions with people who disagree with him about homosexuality, such as the Daily Wire and Jordan Peterson. And so it seems to me that the minimal stable requirement for ensuring the psychological health and financial viability of a child is something like a nuclear family structure. Yes. Minimally, right? So you need a mother and a father. So we appreciate Rubin's openness to honest communication and dialogue about important issues. And Rubin fights for many things that conservatives and Christians would agree with. Well, Dave Rubin, host of the Rubin Report, once called himself a progressive and even worked for a progressive news outlet. Now he says he's fed up with the modern left's autocratic tendencies and cannot endorse them anymore. At the same time, we as Christians should remember that while we appreciate Rubin's willingness to talk to people who disagree with him, we need to continue pointing Rubin towards the truth that God designed marriage to be between a man and a woman. Therefore, man does not have the right to introduce the concept of same-sex marriage. Number one, because by definition, it's not marriage, it's another thing. And number two, because by definition, it goes against what was created in Genesis chapter two. Brandon Tatum is a conservative political commentator, former police officer, and former football player. I also first learned about Tatum from a PragerU video. Even if it were true, all those claims about white privilege, so what? I appreciated how articulate Tatum was in defending positions that conservatives and Christians would agree with. Tatum is fearless and articulate in defending conservative values, which is important in a culture that tries to silence black voices like his. One of their mission statements was to destroy the nuclear family. It was on their website. They removed wrong, it. The wrong, defunding, wrong, the defunding wrong, of police. Wrong. I mean, can I finish the point? No. Tatum is interesting because he professes, defends, and talks about Christianity very openly. But when I think about who I used to be and I think about where I've been, even when times get tough, how incredible is God to save me and rescue me and change me? However, the problem is that Tatum denies the essential doctrine of the Trinity. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this how you wake up to the Trinitarian falsehood. This is how you wake up to it. Only use words that are in the Bible. That's just only use words that are in the Bible. So while we agree with much of what Tatum says, we need to recognize the unfortunate reality that Tatum's view of the Trinity puts him outside of the Christian orthodoxy.